Hey guys, Chunj here, and today I'm going to teach you all about PvP, from the very basics of where to pick up the beginner quest, all the way to what skills I recommend that you do and do not pick up initially. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is go to your grand company. At your grand company, you're going to find someone who gives you quests. The quest is called A Pup No Longer. Now, depending on what grand company you're with, it will depend on who you speak to. If you're a twin adler, you're going to talk to a guy named Forsail Hulos. If you're in Mortal Flame, you're going to talk to a guy named Swift. Now, if you're part of the Maelstrom, you're going to talk to a guy named Rashat Rakhiki. So once you get this quest, it's going to send you to the Morbi Dry Docks. Now, at the Dry Docks, you're going to get on a boat, and the boat's going to send you all the way to the Wolf's Den. Now, this is basically the PvP town that all the PvP gear is bought in, and you can just hang out in it if you want to. Now, once you land at the Wolf's Den, it's going to be around this area where I'm currently at. What you're going to do is run this way, and you're going to go down these steps. In this area, this is where you're going to buy all of your uh, PvP materia, your weapons, and your armor. Now, if you take it right here, you're going to find a guy by the name of Berkoi Lotalsen. Now, this guy, he'll give you the quest, and he'll unlock your dude finder. The way you find out where the PvP is, is you press U, or just go to your dude finder section, and go to the PvP tab. Now, there's four different tabs under the PvP section. The first one is for level 30s, the next one 40s, and two for 50. One of them is locked, which I'll explain in a moment. Now, if you're 50 and you queue for the level 31, it's going to sink you down to level 30. Same with 40. However, if you're 50, the way that you get into this one is either single queue, duo queue, or tri queue. So, either by yourself, or with another person, or with two other people. However, once you get four in your entire team, this will unlock. This is basically the pre-made section, so you don't fight as many pre-mades if you're in this one. Now, when it comes to PvP, you actually have a PvP level, and you also get PvP skills. The way you find this is you go to your character section and you go to PvP profile. Now under this section is going to tell you what rank you are, how many action points are available, and your overall performance as well as your weekly performance. This is all under the Wolf's Den section. Now if you click on the actions and traits section however, you're going to find your PvP abilities. You can scroll through this so don't think you only have these first four skills. Now the way you get these is by ranking up. For every rank that you are, you get one action point. Now, each of these costs three, as you can see, under AP. Three, 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 and so forth. For every three levels, you can buy one skill. So make sure you read these skills very carefully, because if you choose it and you don't want it, you can't reset it unless you buy a very expensive uh, PvP-only item to reset it. Now, to go over the Dragoon skills, I'm going to show you what you should and should not buy initially. Now, I made the mistake of buying this first, thinking that it was my stun breaker. However, Fetter Ward is not a stun breaker. It says that it grants immunity to stuns, sleeps, binds, heavy, and disease for 5 seconds. However, you have to cast this before that effect happens to you. Now, I've had a little issue with this, because sometimes even if I cast it, sometimes sleeps get through, which I'll show you a video of later. However, if you decide to upgrade this, as you can see it says Enhance Fetter Ward, it will, reach, it will shorten the cast time to 120 seconds instead of its current 240 seconds. Now if you do this once more, you'll extend its duration to 10 seconds because its current one is only 5, so it basically doubles it. Now this ability is really good, but I don't suggest getting it until either your second or third bot ability. Now the next one is Impulse Rush. Impulse Rush delivers an attack with a potency of 200. This also reduces weapon TP cost by 30% and waves all directional requirements in combos. That means, so for instance, if you use your heavy thrust after you use your impulse rush, you can literally be directly in front of them and it will actually activate. Same with any of your other combos that require you to be on the flank or behind the target. Now, I have not bought this skill yet because I'm only ranked 10, meaning I've only been able to buy three skills, which you'll see why I have not bought this one yet. Now. This lasts 10 seconds after use, so you can probably get in a combo or two before this runs out. Now if you increase it to second rank, it'll shorten its recast to 180 seconds. If you do it the second time, extend duration of this effect by 20, so it just doubles it. And if you upgrade it to the third tier, it increases the TP reduction to 50%, so it just gives you 20% more TP reduction at max level. Now I'm probably not going to get this for a while, because some of the other skills are a lot more important such as getting ranked to a fetter because it reduces its cast time by basically half, which is really good. Now, your third ability that you can buy is called Skewer. This delivers an attack with a potency of 180, but it also reduces the target's intelligence by 20%. So this is really good on casters, basically, so black mages and uh, summoners. If you increase this, 
it's going to shorten the recast to 150 seconds. And then on the second tier, extends the duration to 20 seconds. And on the third tier, it'll increase the int reduction to 40%. Now this is pretty good in my opinion. Um, I'm gonna have to test it, but at the moment it's really not worth buying, especially when it comes to other skills. Okay, this one's a big one, guys. Weapon throw. This is an instant cast, and it delivers an attack of a potency of 50. Now, the thing about this is its additional effects is a 20% chance of inflicting heavy when dealt from behind. Now, when a target's running from you, it's kind of difficult to actually hit them in the back because sometimes they're sidestepping and so forth. And it's only a 20% chance of inflicting heavy. Now, that's not the reason you actually buy this skill. From my experience, people who are sprinting, which is the next additional effect, it removes it. So if you hit them directly in the back when you use this, it removes their sprint, which is amazing, trust me. Now, the reason I say this is because if you have any of the PvP experience, you know that as a melee champion, it's extremely hard to chase someone down who's sprinting, because, especially when they're a healer, since they use TP on their sprint, as so do we. But if we use sprint, we can't attack. So that's kind of an issue. Now, this is probably your first most important skill, besides the next one, which I'm about to show you. However, you really do need to rank this up. Currently, the recast is 120 seconds. Now, matches only last about two minutes or less for the most part at the earlier levels. They're gonna last a lot longer in the future. However, with no PvP gear currently, everyone's just getting demolished. Now, if you upgrade this, it's gonna shorten the recast to 60 seconds. Now, that's amazing. That means for every one minute, you can cast this. If you upgrade to the second tier, it extends the duration to 12 seconds. And if you increase it to the third tier, it makes the potency a 40% chance of slowing them on use. Now, like I said, this is definitely a skill you're going to want to pick up. If you don't, you're going to have a major issue chasing down um, sprinting healers, sprinting casters, or just someone that's sprinting away and trying not to die by you. Now, the next ability is called Enliven. Enliven is an instant cast and it has a 300 second recast. So basically, once you use it, you're not going to be able to use it again that match in the current meta where everyone's dying so quickly. Now, this instantly restores 50% of your TP. If you upgrade it, it's going to shorten the recast to 180 seconds. And if you upgrade it to the second tier, it's going to increase the TP recovery to 75%. Now, this is pretty good, but for the most part, as a Dragoon, I don't really need it because fights don't last long enough. And if I do need TP, I just use my Invigorate. It's not needed for me currently. Your next skill, and probably your most important skill currently, is Purify. This is going to be the first skill you want to pick up. Now, the reason I say that is because currently, Black mages and white mages sleep the crap out of you, and the sleeps last for 30 seconds. It does have a diminishing return, however, but 30 seconds is a really long time since matches barely last two minutes. Now, if they sleep you for 30 seconds and it lasts the entire time and they recast it, now it's going to last for 20 seconds. That's a total of 50 seconds already that you've been slept. Now, if you come out of it again and they sleep you once more for a third time, it's going to be a seven second sleep. Now, Purify, however, what it does is it removes all detrimental effects. And this can, be this can be used while you're slept, which is amazing. The reason I messed up is because I thought Fetter Ward was that. Since it granted immunity, I thought it broke my stuns and sleeps. No, it's actually Purify that does that. So I highly, highly, highly suggest, guys, that you get this first so that you don't have all the anger issues that most of my uh, free company is actually having with PvP. Now, if you upgrade this once more, it's going to shorten the recast to 150 seconds. Now, that's pretty nice, and I do like that, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to upgrade my weapon throw first to the second tier before I upgrade Purify to the second tier, simply because I'm having more problems with the runners than I am of being slept. Now, the next couple skills are all of your enhancements. So, for Dragoons, you're going to want to look at the Strength one. If you're an Archer, you're going to want to look at Dex, and so on and so forth. Now, this is probably going to be one of the last things I actually pick up because it enhances my strength by four, which is nice, but it's not a ton. And if you upgrade it um, to the second tier, it's eight, and last tier is 13. That's a lot of points. Since there's only 30 ranks total, and I'm already at rank 10, that means you don't have very many things or very many AP points to enhance things. And some of these have, you know, four or three more enhancements after you buy it initially. That's a lot of points, guys. So you're, what you're going to need to do is pick out two or three skills that you're really interested in and know that it's going to help you and just pump your points into those. From my opinion, in the from all my experience that I've had so far, you're going to want to get Purify first, followed by Weapon Throw, followed by Fetter Ward. Now, the reason I say that is because, like I said, 
sleeps are a huge issue right now, as well as sprinters. And thus, you're going to nullify both of those. Not completely, but it's going to help a lot, and you're going to be able to do a lot more damage to people and get out of CC a lot easier. Now, what's really nice about Purify, it doesn't only take away sleep, it takes away stuns, it takes away everything. So any detrimental effect you have on you instantly takes it off. It's really up to you what you're going to choose, but like I said, that's my opinion. Take it as you will. Now that you know what skills you're going to want to get, you're going to want to start PvPing. Now, the reason you're going to want to start PvPing, obviously, is so you can pick up PvP experience to level up to get more ranks, and you're also going to want to get it so you can get the wolf tokens. Now, what do you use the wolf tokens for? Well, that's what these guys are here for. All these guys sell your weapons, your armors, and everything. Or well, your armor, I should say. They only sell the eye level 70 and the eye level 90 gear. So if you want the eye level 55 PvP gear, that's actually crafted, and I'm actually wearing some of it. What I ended up doing, guys, was I bought, I did buy all the eye level 55 gear, right? And I equipped it all and did some PvP matches. However, I found that using my plus one weapon, as well as my AF2 body and legs, actually increases my damage and health pool by a lot more. And I still have quite a bit of survivability with the current morale that I have on with eye level 55 gear. Now, it's really up to you how you're going to do it, but that's what I suggest if you, if you have that option. If you don't have that option and you're fresh level 50, just buy the entire set as probably as well as the weapon to be honest with you now if you want to find out like exactly how much you have when it comes to morale you can just go straight over to the resistances and look at your pvp properties and it tells you exactly what it does basically what morale does is it increases your damage to players and reduces damage from players now a lot of people have been saying oh the i level 55 gear is trash don't buy it don't buy it especially if you have full i level uh, i level 90 pve gear that can be true and it cannot be true. It's kind of on the it's kind of on the verge here. A lot of people are saying just skip it and go directly to the I level 70 gear. But what I suggest it for Dragoon is basically what I did here. This is working really well for me and I have a lot more survivability than in full I level 90 PVE gear. Now, right now I have 2816 wolf tokens. These wolf tokens can be used for this PVE gear or PvP gear, excuse me, and it's decently expensive. Like I said, I have, what, 80, 80 games or so, and I've won 62-63% uh, of those, and I still, I just can now buy my chest. So you're going to have to plan out exactly how you're going to buy these. This is I-Level 70 gear, and if you want to look at the I-Level 90 gear, simply go to this guy on the far right, and he has I-Level 90 gear, which is really expensive. So I would highly suggest just buying the I-Level 70 gear right off the bat and saving up for the I-Level 90 gear because you cannot use the I-Level 90 PvP gear until your max level PvP rank. And it's going to take a really long time to get max level PvP, guys. So it's your choice, but that's my suggestion to you. There is PvP material as well. It's pretty decent. I mean, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to buy it for now, but just give you an idea of what you can and can't buy. Now this item here, this is the item I was talking about. If you mess up on what skills you want to buy and say you put it into something you completely don't want, you're going to have to save up almost 5,000 PVP credits to buy the item to reset them. And it's called the Fury's Anthem. That's really expensive. Now if you want to buy the weapons, here's a weapons vendor directly right here. And this is for the I-Level 90 gear. And the I-Level 70 PVP weapons are here. I'm probably not going to buy this Currently, I'm not sure I'm going to still have to test it because my I level 90 PV weapon is so powerful currently. Well guys, that about does it for the basics of PvP, as well as my thoughts on what skills you should and shouldn't buy when playing a Dragoon in one. I hope you enjoy this, and for my next couple videos, they're going to be of team play and team composition, as well as how to counter other team compositions. Please don't forget to comment in the comment section below, as well as like, favorite, and subscribe to this channel, and share it, because that's going to help my channel grow, and also let me know that you guys want more content from me. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.